Hello, everyone. I think a few people are still joining. Uh, so, yeah, let's wait a bit. But I think uh, we can use the time already to get to know each other a little bit. And for this, we can use the chat function. You find the chat uh, on the very bottom of the Zoom, uh, the Zoom screen. Um, and when you click on it, you can write something in the chat. And I'm super interested in where you are right now, like in which city, um, yeah, are you? Okay, we have Münster, Lüneburg, Berlin even. Okay, Sofia, yeah, <laughs> our guest is in Sofia right now. Nice, and Munich, okay. A nice uh, geographical spread across the, uh, across Europe, one could say. Um, and also, um, we were wondering uh, if you have already had uh, imported food from Bulgaria, like in the supermarket, for example, um, do you know, uh, yeah, if you've already had some food from Bulgaria and what that was? I think it's a tough question. I couldn't really tell. Yeah. I once bought food in Bulgaria and imported it myself. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Maybe feta, okay, yeah. I guess not in the recent time. All right, we were just curious. <laughs> okay, so um, welcome everybody to our sixth episode of the webinar series, Food is Systemically Relevant. It's really nice to see all of you here. Uh, if you want, you can um, turn on your camera. It's always really nice uh, to see who's participating. And uh, my name is Fina. Uh, maybe, or yeah, maybe you know me already. I'm moderating the webinar. <laughs> Hello. And um, yeah, you can see that uh, most of you are muted right now. Uh, that is just to reduce the background noise. Um, so that we can hear everyone who's, yeah, talking. And, um, yeah, if you want to say something, we highly encourage you to participate uh, in the webinar. So if you want to say something, um, just let us know through the chat. Write your questions in the chat, and then I'll try to include them in the, yeah, interview and discussion. And um, also, we are recording uh, the webinar. Um, and you'll find the audio file on YouTube uh, during the next few days. So if you want to listen to it again or recommend it to your friends or family, um, yeah, you'll find the audio file there. Um, yeah, probably uh, you're wondering uh, what exactly we'll do today. Um, first of all, Miriam and Paulina, um, who are organizing the whole webinar series, um, will give you a short um, thematic uh, overview and introduction um, into the topic. And then I'll have uh, a talk with um, our guest today, Asen, from a food cooperative in Bulgaria. Um, and after that, we'll have a nice uh, discussion about everything and at the very end Paulina will give us a summary of the webinar today and will kind of put things in the greater context. Um, so yeah, I think we can start and uh, Miri and Paulina, you can now give the thematic overview. Um, yeah, I don't know if someone is here for the first time, but nevertheless, uh, I will just say a hi from Miri and me. Uh, we know each other from Lüneburg and are active in an initiative called Econa, which is part of the youth environmental network in Niedersachsen, like Germany. And usually we are like with the group, we are designing, for example, materials for educational work. And um, we have a partner initiative in Bulgaria. This is why today we have 
we got a guest from Bulgaria and there will also be an exchange um, to Bulgaria. So if you have any questions to the work of Ikona, you can just ask us later. Um, yeah, but uh, today we do something which is a bit different from our usual workshop educational work. Yes, uh, when the corona measure started, we had the impression that there are a lot of impacts on the food system and very different, uh, yeah, and very different actors and moments in the system. And um, yeah, we wanted to um, show also the um, actors that are not in the media because some topics are like, yeah, reported about in the media but some topics are not highlighted very much and some impacts of corona and some uh, things the corona measures are showing that are anyway maybe going wrong or a bit difficult in uh, the food system are now very visible and um, we wanted to give these things and different people from the food uh, system a platform to share their experiences and their views um, yeah, to get to know a broader picture of the current reality of the food system and also um, problems but also chances for a sustainable food system of the future um, yeah yeah maybe I don't know you asked yourself what the food system is or so and we are also doing this like every day I think and trying to understand all these interlinkages and during the last week we uh last weeks we already had like some guests from nearly like all parts of the german food system like we had farmers there and uh, people who own a cafe and last week there was for example charlotte who worked as um, at the demeter association so she's promoting ecologically produced food and yeah we are just like getting aware even more now that everything is connected and if one like measure affects one actor of the system this has effects on everyone so um but as we already like now nearly checked out the whole german food system and there's nothing more to explore now but um then we thought um today we will have a look um over the border uh our way border and uh yeah i have a guest from bulgaria and see what the food system there looks like. Yes, and when talking about the food system, um, then we of course have to mention that it's not as easy as um, Paulina just showed. Um, therefore, we designed also a Wimmel picture, uh, which is looking like that and giving a broader view on interlinkages and different actors and situations in the food system and um, yeah this is also only a little uh, yeah view into the system but uh, showing a bit more the complexity and um, i'm very curious to see um, what we can today learn from the bulgarian food system and uh, yeah get to know a new world somehow uh, which we or probably most of us did not know until now or don't know until now. Thank you very much, the two of you, for this uh, nice introduction. And now I would like to welcome Essen on our virtual stage. Um, thank you very much for being here today. And um, yeah, Essen Asen, <laughs> Nenov, um, he is um, a member of the control body of the food cooperative Haran Corp in Sofia, in the capital of Bulgaria. And um, he also has a vineyard, which he uses as some kind of testing field for um, natural farming. And um, Asen, you also um, chose a section of the Wimmel picture um, that kind of reminded you of your work in the cooperative, right? Um, so maybe we can take a look at the at the section first. So why did you why did you choose this section? Well, uh, when I I I chose it, but um, then I thought, uh, well, we are not in um, uh, global south. And this is so, um, actually what is presented here. But uh, 
since we are indigenous here, I mean, uh, <clears throat> in Bulgaria, uh, it is actually like this. We are going uh, to, uh, I mean, as a part of a uh, food cooperative, we are meeting uh, people that um, that has uh, has no idea of their rights, uh, that has um, that uh, that are very vulnerable because uh, because they have no knowledge of uh, they don't have many kind of knowledge, and um, this is how they are. Um, so the the basis of the food system is uh, is very mm, fluctuant or uh, uh, not not very stable and. <clears throat> But this is uh, something from uh, not not for this part. So it is correct, but uh, I think uh, this angle is is correct. But also the the opposite. I mean, the upper uh, upper left uh, maybe also there. Um, if we maybe this is the our Western part of uh, uh, of dealing the things with um, uh, food sovereignty or food. Uh, independence but actually uh, it is uh, i think it's part of uh, um, city agriculture or um, something like this which which is not part actually f from the the big food system it's like uh, like a model that is transforming uh, some thinking and some doing but actually it's not so powerful now Okay, so um, what exactly do you do in the food cooperative um, in Bulgaria? How exactly do you uh, get to know these perspectives, for example? Well, um, so let, let's share some, some history then. Um, so this uh, food cooperative was uh, um, initiated by a group of people uh, informally uh, with no idea of uh, getting rich uh, but um, only like a social cooperative of getting uh, clean food so clean food uh, is uh, actually the, the slogan of our corporate cooperative and it's not something new or something interesting but actually it's uh, uh, it's something that defines uh, my work because I am part of uh, uh, this checkpoint, we call it checkpoint, uh, our, uh, our, yeah, our group. So uh, we, we, we are checkpoint for uh, products and for uh, also for um, producers. So. Uh, if there is a product that wants uh, wanted to be presented to our members and to our markets, uh, because we also have uh, several services, which is one of the, is one of these uh, services is um, farmers markets in uh, several towns in Bulgaria, and the the second main uh, service is um, um, deliveries. I mean home deliveries, uh, uh, like. To two times per week uh, at, at, at this point. Uh, so we are a checkpoint and uh, we, uh, we just check if uh, the product meets our guidelines. And um, these guidelines are uh, something that uh, all of the members of cooperative has, uh, has voted to for all products and consumers to align with this or to comply with this. So we were checking, for, for example, there is uh, some, uh, today I, I looked at this email, like uh, we want to join your system and uh, this is what we do. And they are actually producing uh, hummus, uh, like this Arabian salad, um, like dip, um, but uh, it's okay. Uh, part of uh, hummus could be grown in Bulgaria, but uh, sesame is not grown in Bulgaria. So I'm sorry, <laughs> they could not join us. Yeah, so we have these uh, um, principles that uh, the food is local, the food is, uh, is not, um, um, there is no 
pesticides so like uh, insecticides or any kind of ecocide that is not uh, um, permitted for biological uh, production actually mm. yeah. okay did i understand correctly that you're basically in contact with um, like farmers food producers and also with retailers um, and like markets for example where they can sell uh, the food uh, yes, we are organizing these markets mm -hmm. uh, and um, all the logistics are uh, is our business and uh, in organizing the uh, the, the diversity of, uh, of products uh, within some specific markets or I mean like uh, for this specific day is, uh, is also organized uh, specifically. Uh, for this day or for this uh, season or for this place uh, and it's a it's a um, it's a tricky game because um, there are uh, these are people that uh, um, we are <clears throat> moving they are not objects and if we have a map of the place and the, the market we are just using uh, uh, the, the, it's like a game to move these uh, these people or to um, exclude some of them but um, they are losing money <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, it, I'm not part of, uh, of this uh, part of um, the organizing can work but uh, maybe I'm happy for it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because there are uh, some decisions that uh, you, you're, you're then the, the enemy for the for the certain amount of time I'm, all, uh, I'm almost joking but but uh, there is uh, this oriental drama um, for, if even if uh, there is a, um, there is nothing um, uh, that is wrong in Bulgaria, there is a lot of drama because this is our culture actually. Okay, and um, how many members does your cooperative have uh, on like average? Like uh, how many producers and how many um, consumer contacts do you have? Mm. So about uh, yeah, we uh, th this is a very nice question because uh, this is um, the moment when uh, I could share actually the structure of the uh, cooperative because uh, it, the, the cooperative was started about maybe eight or nine years ago, but uh, um, yeah. it's. Um, it's hard to say, uh, but it, in general, um, yeah, I'm not sure actually, but uh, about the, the current uh, um, number, but uh, it, in the last months, they were about uh, um, five or six hundred uh, uh, clients or uh, I mean, um, like customers. Some of them are uh, associated members, and a very small amount of them are, um, uh, or number of them are um, like core number, uh, core um, members, or uh, full. Uh, they have full rights. I mean, like uh, uh, voting rights and um, just to participate within the the cooperative and in some other ways other than buying and selling. Mm. So uh, the, the next part of the uh, structure of the cooperative is uh, uh, the farmers. Uh, they are maybe, maybe the, the most important part, um, but actually if there are no, if there are no uh, customers, uh, they will have a problem. Uh, so uh, we try to, to mix uh, consumers with producers and uh, try to, to match uh, the, the, the diversity um, from the producer side to, to the demand on the customer side. And it happens slowly, but it mm -hmm. is. Yeah, it's probably uh, yeah, a lot of work and yeah, quite a big cooperative, it seems like. Yeah, uh, I just missed uh, 120 farmers. Yeah. <laughs> okay, nice. And um, earlier you were talking about uh, clean food, like this is your slogan um, of the cooperative. 
Um, would you say that um, other food in Bulgaria um, is like not clean or uh, I guess you could probably replace the clean with sustainable um, kind of? Hmm. What would you say? Well, it, it depends uh, because sustainable uh, nowadays is uh, meaning nothing uh, actually um, because there are about 100 definitions of sustainability. So, um, no, uh, we are looking for uh, some other term. It's, this is not enough. This is too old. <laughs> um, well, um, so... Um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a big topic actually on sustainability and uh, how it's. Um, yeah, then let's concentrate more on your slogan <laughs> and what exactly yeah, yeah. you're trying to say with that. Um. Yeah, so clean food. We we mean uh, there is no uh, detectable sites uh, within the food that is sell, sold on the market. That, uh, as simple as that. So if uh, we find these, uh, uh, for example, some uh, BASF uh, um, chemicals or um, Syngenta or DuPont or uh, these, uh, the, the big chemi chemical guys, chemical brothers. So if we uh, uh, find some uh, of these uh, chemicals uh, within the, um, the produce we are stopping this produce and um, this uh, we, we go to, to check uh, what's going on uh, on the field uh, we talk with the farmer with we, we, it, it's a small investigation it's not actually investigation but we are trying to see how this is happening because uh, there are two options in general uh, and they are, they are not good. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the first option is um, they are selling something that uh, they've, they've not produced and they, they, it is both uh, uh, some by, uh, I don't know when and or where. So they'll just uh, go to the market, uh, another market, I don't know, and just uh, get some... Um, Greek bananas and uh, no, it, there is no Greek bananas. Greek uh, oranges and s s sell to, to our to our uh, market. So it's not possible. Uh, yes, Greek oranges. Yes, it's possible. But uh, um, if they are treated like uh, industrial farming, no, we we not we don't support this. It uh, and it's very simple. Why? Uh, because um, of course. Uh, the, the health and uh, everything uh, for the consumer, of course, that uh, that counts. But uh, uh, maybe at least uh, at least equal uh, of equal importance is uh, how we treat the soil, uh, because we we tend to to think that soil is something like uh, like dust or something dirt or um, we we don't uh, think uh, like um, for the soil as um, as something li alive uh, and it's very much alive and mm -hmm. if uh, if we don't think it is alive this is a symptom that uh, um, it's uh, closely related with uh, unsustainability okay. if we think uh, the soil is is alive and we interact with it like uh, like it is alive, uh, then we will think uh, of not killing uh, the, the soil. So that's uh, mm. that's how we define clean. Okay. And would you say that um, in the current situation with all the Corona um, measures, um, it's an advantage for you to have, uh, yeah, mostly local food um, in your cooperative compared to like other countries or food systems who have to import a lot? Um, that's, that's interesting. Uh, well, uh, maybe uh, in some minutes I will share, share my screen and uh, just show, to show you um, what has been the, the effect of the corona on uh, our sales. Uh, I mean, for the service, um, like delivering boxes, uh, weekly boxes to, to some customers or uh, um, subscribers. Um, but what what um, 
what is happening in general uh, on the food system in Bulgaria? It, most of the people is uh, uh, going to to, very, to to these uh, very big shops, uh, supermarkets, and uh, um, and just uh, are just buying uh, like uh, some some discounted uh, or uh, advertised. Uh, um, uh, food with uh, lots of uh, processing and additives. So um, this food is uh, is sold. Uh, well, just to give you uh, a little bit of context, uh, Bulgaria is the um, the poorest country in the um, in the European Union. So if uh, something some food is um, um, it's cheap. It is being bought. That's as simple as that. Uh, but it is aggressively uh, advertised as something local, something good, something uh, uh, cool, even uh, to buy uh, something from Kaufland or for, from Lidl. Uh, but they are hard discounters. They they produce. Uh, they have this uh, mindset that it's not um, sustainable. It and it could not be sustainable. Could not be transformed. Uh, their business model is is something that could not cross the uh, neither um, uh, biodiversity ba ba barrier, neither uh, climatic ba barrier. It, this these models are very very old. I mean, this uh, um, I uh, I pity them. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, but um, these models are a part of the old thinking. That's it. Uh, so uh, the, the Bulgarian consumers are um, uh, are not aware that uh, there is uh, something like uh, dependence. Uh, if something is uh, is with a greater price, maybe it is better, uh, like uh, contents. Um, but no, but people are uh, buying um, lots of uh, cheap stuff. Uh, eating uh, only uh, cheap uh, and uh, I mean food poor on uh, um, uh, on proteins, but uh, more uh, oils and uh, like palm palm oil or whatever. So this is the context of our situation, and uh, we are we are trying to do something just the opposite to to sh uh, to shorten the. Uh, the producer to consumer um, chain uh, and to to support the the producer with the fair price of uh, the produced because if the if the producer is fair and say uh, and i'm i'm producing clean food for you to be healthy and not to spend so much money uh, for your health uh, this is uh, how things are are going, but I'm not sure uh, many of uh, Bulgarians are ready for this. Uh, there are uh, consumers that are aware of um, what they should do in this situation, but um, mm -hmm. most of the people th they don't have uh, the 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 option to to buy um, something, uh, for example, three times uh, the regular price. Mm. Okay, and um, we have one uh, question in the chat uh, right now. Um, do you know whether your, your farmers from the cooperative um, harvest better or worse than farmers who use chemicals? I think probably also the like quantity of or the amount of harvest is uh, addressed by this question. Um. Uh, yes. Um, well, it, Two days ago or three, uh, we we have uh, we have been on um, on a check on the field uh, for, in several farms. So um, I, I saw uh, the the farms the, the farm that uh, we we wanted to to see, but right next to to this farm, which was a mess, and. It looks like a mess, but it's natural uh, 
um, way of, uh, of farming, actually, or, or in natural way of thinking for farming. Um, and right next to, to this farmer, there is another farmer, but two, met, two meters up, uh, they are apart. So the, the neighbor is, uh, uh, the, it was uh, like a field for a, for a photo session. It was uh, like there is no uh, anything green, uh, no, no, not, not, not perfectly green. Everything is perfectly green. Uh, there is no yellow color. Uh, there is no uh, any other um, uh, herb or uh, whatever uh, mm -hmm. plant. Uh, it is only soil and these, uh, uh, the target plants that uh, they, they wanted mm -hmm. to produce. And it is like totally industrial. Mm. Yeah, so they produce a lot uh, just because they are using uh, chemicals. Okay. Uh, but they are producing a lot. Um, um, and generating profit. And this profit actually comes from the uh, loss of life uh, within the soil. And then they just uh, change the place or uh, I mean like uh, when, the, when the soil is uh, already uh, totally uh, sandy, mm -hmm. uh, they will change the place or they will uh, they'll do some uh, other rotation, culture rotation or something. But this, actually, this uh, way of thinking is, is not, uh, not sustainable. It is unthinkable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm saying this as a biologist, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I think uh, we all agree that this yeah, degradation of land is not so um, advantageous. Um, we're unfortunately running a little bit out of time. So maybe we can now come to the corona measures in Bulgaria and how this um, has affected your uh, work at the cooperative. Um, mm -hmm. You said you prepared a few slides uh, to show us um, a little bit the developments from the past weeks. So you, what you see is, um, is the homepage of, uh, of our uh, the food delivery system. So there are some products, uh, uh, yeah, and some descriptions. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe um, you can like share the three main developments or something from the past weeks, which measures there are and how this has changed, or so that we can uh, get to know. Yeah, mm -hmm. or can make most of the minutes yeah. we still have. Thank you. I, uh, this is the, uh, I'm showing you directly the uh, stats, statistics uh, on dates of delivery. And we are just going to, uh, to see uh, from the, the start of uh, the, uh, the situation in Bulgaria. It was on uh, 13 of March, the epidemiological uh, measures and whatever. So, uh, but let's, let's go to the, to the March, uh, 2019 so let's see uh it was okay it was thir 13 13 so the 13 of april so uh we could see here like um the on the 27th of march uh last year we we have uh, about uh, uh, 2,000 leva, which is about 1,000 um, euro of turnover for the day. So let's see. Uh, so this is without coronavirus virus. So let's see what's hap what happen what happens here one year later. So here uh, we 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 do uh, double the. Um, the days of delivery. So this is one time um, doubling the, uh, um, the efforts, but you see it, it, on 25th, uh, 25th of uh, March, there is uh, about uh, 8,000 uh, level um, turnover, which is about 4,000 Euro. So you see it's about, uh, about five or six times uh, we have um, 
we have calculated this uh, just to, to see really uh, um, uh, how much uh, time, uh, how much uh, uh, the, the corona is, um, is affecting the sales and it is affecting the sales big time, but in, uh, in, um, in a good way here because this is a del uh, this, this is delivery like home delivery and what about the markets in within the same period there was completely no markets everything was uh, was um, uh, was forbidden actually and uh, no one uh, was uh, was prepared for that so the the markets were totally stopped um, and and this, uh, this delivery service actually was, uh, um, was something that uh, solved uh, a lot of problems uh, uh, for the consumers uh, because they wanted food and, uh, but didn't want to go to the shop or to contact uh, other people. So we, we solved this issue and then uh, we solved uh, another issue which, which, was, uh, which is still uh, something uh, quite important and I'm not sure we, we solved it, but uh, well, we helped. Uh, um, so the producers uh, had uh, a produce that uh, couldn't be um, kept, uh, couldn't be transformed in anything and so they, they started throwing it uh, on the field. So they, are, they were completely losing uh, uh, natural farming produce, uh, just like that. Uh, and it was because of uh, non-working markets. So as a compensation, uh, which is, a, I think, a good, good, um, good model. It's not a business model, but it's a good cooperative model just to have a, a diversification of, uh, of risks. Uh, because um, if uh, there is no markets, uh, uh, th they're completely different as the services like markets and deliveries. So uh, th we, we had two of them working. So one of them uh, disappeared, but uh, the other uh, doubled, tripled, quadrupled. Yeah. So uh, I, I think mm -hmm. there is a compensation. Okay. Um, you talked uh, about like a lot of uh, bigger topics, like for example, um, how the soil um, could be um, like retained or um, yeah, uh, be like taken care of um, better. Um, who do you think uh, is uh, responsible for this? Like, uh, should the communication um, to the farmers increase, like the to raise the awareness um, with regards to the topic, or um, do you see an opportunity in this current Corona situation to maybe? Uh, increase the awareness um, of uh, ecological agriculture? Hmm. Very interesting question. I, I'm not sure uh, that uh, here in Bulgaria, uh, the, the, the farmers or the gardeners uh, of ours are uh, aware of, uh, are aware that there is a connection between the, the SARS-2, the so-called coronavirus, and uh, the, the environmental issues. I, I don't think that they, they're making the connections, but uh, um, actually we are starting um, uh, internal communication on, on the subject of uh, keeping the soil, keeping the, um, uh, the chemicals uh, outside uh, of the gardens and uh, just trying to help um, the farmers because what, I see uh, when I go to to the most innovative, uh, uh, like in thinking, uh, farmers, uh, like sustainable farmers, natural farmers. I see that they are left alone and they have no idea how to uh, uh, how to uh, produce what they uh, want to produce. Or um, everything is working, but there is no people. And if there is no people, you could not, uh, you could not do it by yourself. Uh, last uh, week, I was, uh, I, I saw a lady. She was alone on 160 hectares of land. It's enormous. Uh, it's, uh, 
it's one, 160,000 square meters. <laughs> so, uh, and, and she's alone. And so we, we have to try to, uh, to make a connection uh, to, to the problems with, uh, on, this, on these farms, on these fields, because otherwise they will fade away and we are left with uh, Kaufland, Lido, uh, Bila, I don't know, um, they are... Okay. Tesco, so, I don't know. So do you think that um, ecological agriculture or agriculture in general is like a field where less and less uh, people get involved in because it's like less attractive compared to other jobs, for example, or what mm. do you think is the... Well, I think um, there, is, there are two processes here. Uh, uh, one process is uh, the, the these people that are coming from the from town uh, from the big town to the uh, to the village to the villages uh, they they have knowledge they have uh, read some books and how to think they, they've learned how to think about uh, uh, creating life and managing uh, or transforming matter uh, through uh, the prisms of uh, of living systems uh, which is very good, and this is not a job, and this is uh, this is uh, creativity. This is something that uh, you you create something, and this is a cause. Uh, and if you go in this direction, there will be profit, but um, maybe not financial, but th there will be profit. Uh, but if um, the other uh, the other way around uh, is uh, is more the business uh, or the farmers way of uh, how the, they are doing the things um, they they think okay i i will do this and this because the neighbor i i heard that they uh, they they did something last year and then next year everyone is selling uh, oranges or well it's not possible of course but uh, for example tomatoes uh, and the price is very low so uh, it's not very clever and uh, of course they uh, most of the farmers i'm not talking about uh, our uh, farmers uh, but, but they are using uh, a lot of chemicals which are very very costly uh, and these chemicals um, they are like cocktails uh, uh, with other chemicals and um, and specific seeds and it's a very very complex system if uh, if you go uh, in this direction and then you have to uh, to introduce machinery in the farms and then you are totally financially uh, um, in, incapable of uh, uh, survive Th that's the the reality of uh, starting a farmer to starting a farm to to get a profit mm. so um do you actually also do like educational work with the farmers that uh, you have in your cooperative already um, to like increase awareness or are they already, yeah, already, do they already have this uh, ecological mindset, if you can say this? I'm afraid that uh, some of the farmers has no idea of this mindset. Mm, I, I've seen... Um, some show uh, show programs uh, uh, when 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 going to check uh, some farms. I mean, uh, uh, like you you went there and you see that everything is is done just to impress you, and actually nothing is real. And how how could uh, could I see say say that and see that? Well, uh, for example. Um, there is a plant. Um, I, I, I forgot. I didn't uh, uh, remember the, the name in English. Hmm. Uh, but you you also have it. Um, it, it hurts when you you, you touch mm -hmm. it. Uh, so this plant is a starter for a for a, for a culture. Um, uh, if if uh, if you put it in water, and then uh, on the sun and it starts to smell very, very bad. Uh, but this is a good thing. <laughs> so, uh, and I, I went to, to this uh, farm to see, and I was impressed, and 
I was like, okay, let's see if this smells because I'm not feeling any smell here. So I, I checked uh, with my head within this uh, container, but no, it, it was not smell. It was completely fresh, done today, just to, to impress us with, uh, with milk products from the uh, dairy products, uh, waste and whatever. So, so they have some mindset or they have the idea that this is cool and uh, we, we have to, to present it like, like it is uh, what it is. But uh, actually this farmer that I'm uh, talking about, uh, we have um, tested him posi positive with uh, uh, some, some insecticides. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he also uh, uh, were using, <laughs> well, we, we are uh, checking him from, uh, for um, uh, if, if the food is uh, really clean. And after the, the end of the, of the field that is uh, his field, which is supposedly clean, uh, he he's saying mm, because I saw uh, some really green line after this uh, plants, but uh, really green, uh, really yellow, but yellow mm -hmm. like orange yellow. Oh, it was very strange. Now was, it was a human uh, activity, of course. It was not natural because it was a um, <laughs> long line. Yeah. So, and I was asking, what is this actually? Um, and he said. Oh, well, uh, this is the end of the field. And then after the end of the field, I sprayed uh, Monsanto's Roundup. Oh, no. Oh, come on. And then we, uh, well, how to start, where, where to start, mm -hmm. come on. And yeah, and this is some, some uh, part of uh, the cooperative, uh, this member of, for many years. And that, uh, yeah. So there is a constant uh, need for improving the, the knowledge and the understanding of the current situation because 50 years ago, it was completely different. Nowadays, we could not uh, use this uh, method of thinking um, like industrial or uh, we, doesn't, we, don't, uh, we, we don't care about, about uh, the energy or the, uh, whatever it costs, just I want this. This is the the wrong way of uh, of dealing with uh, natural systems in general. Okay, so there's like a lot of work left for you as a cooperative. Um, yeah, I have, it's always like yeah, I have uh, one last question, um, and maybe you can uh, yeah answer like find a short answer because we unfortunately don't have so much time left. Um, the question. Is, so our, our webinar series is called Food is Systemically Relevant. Would you consider um, your work at the cooperative and the cooperative itself um, systemically relevant for the Bulgarian food system? It's actually mm. quite a tough question, <laughs> but maybe we still manage <laughs> to find a uh, yeah, short answer. So if, if uh, our activities are uh, relevant to the food system or the food system yeah. is relevant? Uh, if your activities are relevant mm. for the food system. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, they are not relevant to the current food system, for sure. We are outsiders. Uh, we are not wanted nearby because uh, we, we are very, um, very clear uh, for what we don't want. And uh, if uh, there are many people who are organizing uh, markets uh, or uh, I don't know, whatever uh, businesses, they could not um, work with uh, or, or uh, governmental or uh, municipal organs. Uh, they, they don't uh, want to, to have a, a, disc a discussion with us because uh, uh, we have principles and we, have, we, we say, no, we don't want this. We, 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 we specifically simply ask like this and this and that's it. And uh, it's, it's hard to, to, to fight every, uh, every decision because uh, nobody wants to, to actually help. Uh, nobody uh, wants to, uh, I mean, like uh, um, in, in municipality, of course, uh, our partners are fine, but but it's uh, it's very hard to to 
to find motivation to, to work uh, in this environment. But this is a uh, personal drama. It's not uh, so important. Um, what is important is uh, that uh, our uh, locally, I mean, in, in the time frame, locally, um, we are not relevant. But uh, uh, not locally or in general, uh, 50 years uh, ahead or 100 years uh, um, ahead, we are totally relevant of uh, what we should do. And th these uh, values that we share is, um, is what, the, what makes this cooperative working. And this is uh, why we, we are going to uh, going um, to the fields to check if this plant is that plant, if this uh, is sold by, by this guy, or uh, let me get these chemicals, check, oh, you're positive, um, I'm sorry. So it, it's constantly needed um, uh, like, a, like a spiral, um, like a constant spiral upwards. Mm. Yeah. I think uh, that's a very nice message to yeah to continue um, working on this and improving the world step by step. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we are already at the end of the interview. It was so nice to talk to you, Asen. Thank you so much Thank you uh, for being here today. And um, as you guys noticed, we spontaneously decided to. Um, skip the discussion because uh, yeah we kind of wanted to take more time for the interview but um, we'll like us and, and us will still stay in here for um, after the webinar so if you have more questions for us and you can also stay with us afterwards and yeah ask your questions um, so now I would like to hand over to Paulina for the summary of today um yeah i will try <laughs> um to like somehow wrap up what we heard in the last uh yeah maybe last hour nearly <laughs> so um yeah we started with the the aspect that um the people who are the basis of the food system like the farmers uh sometimes or most of them don't know their rights and therefore are very vulnerable and um that for example, this food cooperative as an alternative to supermarkets can also stabilize them and um, yeah, that they are more resilient to changes and um, yeah, that the food cooperative just somehow can yeah, um, empower them also. And um, we talked about this educational aspect a lot and I had the impression that this food cooperative is a space where people like the farmers but also the consumers are learning really a lot and learning to take responsible decisions on what to grow which pesticides to use or not but also what to consume and that this is really necessary and um, on the one hand it's necessary to have this direct connection between farmers and uh, consumers um, and match the demands and uh, yeah the the offer so I wondered like who adapts to whom, like is it the consumers who have to adapt or the farmers or how to yeah, meet in the middle. Um, and the other thing which is uh, important which came became clear I think is that also like for the actors who are in the system, the system is so complex so even the farmers who think they do something good and they want to join a cooperative and then they use Monsanto's Roundup. So it's like for everyone who's inside or outside, it's really complex and there's um, a lot to do. And as Asen also talked about this issue with the soil, which is like so central, but it's hard to communicate. They also thought of the German discussion. It's like no one talks about the soil when talking about ecologically produced food or like nearly no one, not in the supermarkets. <laughs> um, so, and that maybe this food cooperative where you bring people together is a place where this can be communicated um, better. And then I just, yeah, wondered if this is somehow harder in times of Corona to bring people together or not. But um, yeah, as you said, your work is not uh, focused only on Corona times, but uh, in the future, it will be so systemically relevant and then no one will talk about Corona anymore. So. Um, 
yeah, I think it's also no problem that we did not focus so much on Corona issues today because it was like really interesting and it was hard not to always compare to the German system, like in my head. Um, some things reminded me of German consumers, of course, <laughs> and also of farmers probably, but um, still it was a small but nice insight. And yeah, if you still have questions, just feel free to stay with us. Yeah, thank you, Paulina, for this summary. Um, I also think we could have delved way more into the topic if we had more time. And um, yeah, we'll probably all continue thinking about uh, yeah about these big questions. And um, yeah, uh, as always, we are very much looking forward uh, um, to hear your feedback about uh, this session. What did you like about it? What um, should we do differently next time? So feel free to write in the chat or send us an email um, with your feedback. And um, as some of you already know, we also have a Telegram group that can keep you updated on when the next session is and who we'll invite. And also you'll find a small handout in there about uh, today's webinar, but also uh, with information on the past webinars that we've had. And next Monday, we won't have a webinar due to the holiday, but in two weeks, um, you can join us again uh, for getting to know some new perspectives um, with regards to workers' rights, uh, workers uh, in agriculture, but also food processing and retailing. Um, so yeah, 8th of July, same time, same link. Um, yeah, and uh, for everyone who doesn't want to stay with us now, um, have a nice evening and uh, yeah, maybe see you next time and everyone else feel free to yeah continue talking to us thank you for having been here <laughs>